love and joy and peace, patience and kindness, goodness and faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. These are the fruits of the Spirit that we have been given to live within us every day. Good morning. If everything has gone according to plan, Vivian and I are now ensconced in a little retreat uh, just south of Estes Park in Colorado for a little R&R. If things haven't gone as planned, I don't even want to think about where I am right now. But I'm glad I could be with you this morning, even if it's just virtually. Let us pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. We often say that this is a broken world, and we say it so often, I'm not sure we really know anymore exactly what that means. It's a, it's a common phrase. We, we look at the world around us. We look at looters in stores and crime on the rise or corruption in our public offices or whatever it is, and we nod our heads and we say, oh man, that's, that's a broken world. And uh, sometimes we see it in just uh, dysfunctional behavior of people and uh, or of families, uh, parents leaving their, or abandoning their children or uh, uh, things like that. And we, again, we, we just say, oh, this is a broken world. But I'm not really sure that's exactly what Jesus meant when he talks about a broken world. We think perhaps that brokenness might go a little bit deeper. But how do we identify that? What do we do to make that real? Well, I want you to think about an angel that has fallen off your mantelpiece, hit the ground, and broke. Now, the angel can't fix itself, and really, you by yourself cannot fix that angel, you need a third item for that. You need some Gorilla Glue, right? Something to put that angel back together again. And this is where Christ comes into this picture of brokenness. Because what is broken is not, not an angel's wing. What is broken is not the psychology of people or society. What is broken is our relationship with God. We can see this all throughout the Bible. As people move farther and farther away from God, they get uh, farther into themselves, they get farther into violence, into bad behavior, into morality that is basically non-existent. And then there is the return. The return from the Babylonian exile, a big event for the people of Israel, but it's also a metaphor for this return to God, for the, for the Jews to leave Babylon, return to Jerusalem, rebuild it, rebuild the temple. Perhaps they used gorilla glue, I don't know, but all of those things put together are also part of their return to God, to being in obedience and in harmony with God's will and wishes. And time and time again, we see them fall out of that, particularly when we get to the time of the prophets and they're, they're talking about all these disasters that are going to happen or might happen. But then in Isaiah, we hear about the glue that's coming, this Messiah, this Savior who will restore us. And by that specifically, I mean restore a relationship with God. And so finally, when Jesus does come, when the Messiah arrives, that is the core of his message. And in the, the reading from the gospel that you heard this morning, Christ says, my peace I leave with you. 
and it is not the peace of the world. Right? He makes that very clear. It's not the peace of stopping the looters or even keeping families together, though those might be pieces of it. It is the true peace of returning to God through Christ Jesus. This is what he tells the disciples. This is what he tells us. And we can and perhaps should work day in and day out to improve the conditions of humanity um, in society, in our families, wherever, but we also need to improve our relationship to God if we want to truly be in harmony with God and therefore at peace. We talk about the peace of Christ. We've heard readings from Advent and again today about peace, but ultimately it comes down to this restoration of peace with God, of a, of a fixing of the relationship with God, a relationship that has been broken since the very beginning. I'm not, you know, we, we look at Adam and Eve and say, oh, they were the uh, progenitors of original sin. You probably know by now how I feel about that phrase, original sin. But we really could start talking about original brokenness. And what does that brokenness do? Well, the first thing that happens when they leave the garden, or one of the first things, is that Cain murders Abel. Definitely not at peace with God. And Cain murders Abel because Abel has, through his sacrifice, pleased God and restored that relationship with God. Cain has not done that with his sacrifice, even though God says, basically, try again. So that brokenness has moved out into every corner of the globe. I don't know about you, but when I see on the television the, the looters and the families breaking up, and oh my goodness, again, we could go through that list of terrible things I know that the first thing I have to do before I sign petitions or run out and uh, volunteer or whatever it is, is to become right with God. That is the way of peace. Because if I cannot be an example of peace to my children, to the rest of my family, to my community, to my church, to my extended family, and so on. If I cannot do that, if I cannot truthfully say that I am right with God, that I am at peace, how am I supposed to transmit that to others? It's what we work on. And the way we work on it is to trust God. Peace and trust come together. And out of that peace and trust, there comes a strength. So we have this combination of, of peace, which isn't, which isn't passive, because there is a strength to it as we can, we can emanate peace, if you will, as we become right with God. And we become right with God through our trust in God. When you think you can fix the angel all on your own, that is not trusting God. That is hubris. That is human secularism. That is, I don't need God. Silly as it sounds, God's the gorilla glue. The necessity of that third party, something to bring us together, to hold us together, and to help us be each individually at peace with God so that we may begin to be at peace with the world. Amen.